This is the Escute Natuno Plus, a 250 watt e-bike with a mountain bike style frame. So far, so familiar, but unlike the Escute Natuno, the Plus has a secret weapon, a torque sensor. In this video, you'll join me on my first ride where we'll see how that torque sensor works, find out how the bike arrived and what came in the box, use the app that comes with the bike and go over the specs. But first, I'm gonna ride uphill without any power. Right now, I'm riding up a hill, and uh, ooh, that was first gear with no power. This is the Escute Natuno Plus, and it's different to any bike I've had before because it's got a torque sensor instead of a cadence sensor. A cadence sensor simply detects whether you're turning the pedals, and as soon as it thinks you're turning the pedals, you think, right, give it power. Whereas a torque sensor also recognizes how much effort you're putting in. Now, I've never actually tried one before. This is my very first torque sensor. So we're about to discover at the same time the difference. So I'm gonna turn it on. And that was the hill I usually go up with power. I'll come back and do that later. So turning it on, it's got a nice bright LED display. And I think I'm in level zero. So now I'm gonna go into level one. 14 kilometers per hour. Can't tell the difference. Oh, oh, oh. Right, right, hang on, let's go back to level one again. So I can't really tell the difference, but when I went to do it, it gave me a bit of extra power. So I'm gonna go to level two. I'm gonna put the gear up a bit now. The car on the long, wrong way. Let's go up. Let's go down. <laughs> this is this is odd because while I'm going downhill at the moment usually if I was ghost pedaling it'd be powering me along but it recognizes as soon as I start trying it also tries for me 22 kilometers per hour I'm going to go to uh, level three right so I'm still just going down a hill I think I need to go down the gears a bit I'm in gear seven now So as soon as it recognises I'm pushing, it gives me that bit of extra power. Right, I'm in level five, I'm going level five. In case you're wondering, ghost pedaling means that although my legs are going round, I'm not exerting any force, so not helping the bike at all. It's what you need to do to keep most non-throttle e-bikes supplying you with power. So I'm, I'm going up the gears again now, like the actual gears, not the power assist. And now I'm ghost pedaling, and I am going 24 kilometers per hour. Twenty kilometers ghost pedal. But then when I go for it, I don't know if it's me or the uh, the bike. This is so weird. Well, I don't think it is weird. It's just I'm just not used to it. That's all because it looks like you've got to use the actual gears and if I do want to ghost pedal it just means I've got to put it in a higher gear so if I ghost pedal at 22 in gear 2 see so it kind of starts pushing me and there's like nap nap back off back off so I'm going to go gear 3 and then it actually Ghost pedals lets me go a bit faster. So now I'm gonna go into gear six. Now it's pushing me up to 25. And I am pretty much, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? He was gonna go through there. Right, so, okay, it works. So I was worried, yeah, that you'd have to try harder to make it go faster. Kind of like, do you know Iron Man? But sometimes he has to catch something and he feels like, it looks like he's actually trying, like he's struggling or something. And you think, well, why is that? Because obviously he's in a, in a suit with servos and motors and stuff. It's as if 
the stronger Tony Stark is, the more he could actually lift his Iron Man. And I thought, I wondered if that was going to be the case with this, but I think what it did is, is it basically, it makes it more natural. Like it detects where, when you're putting effort in and when you're not putting effort in, except you don't actually have to put lots of effort in. The bike came well packaged and was covered in loads of protective stuff that took ages to cut off. I had to put the wheel, the pedals, the stand and the handlebars on, all of which was very straightforward. I also had to connect a green plug, a blue plug and a yellow plug. I had to attach the front light which is wired into the computer and a rear light that wasn't able to be charged by USB. Instead it used AA batteries and was a bit rubbish really. All in all the bike is very easy to assemble, it comes with instruction manuals, 3 amp charger and a decent toolkit with some proper spanners or wrenches. And apparently there's an app. It's got an app this, so in a sec I'm going to fire that up and we'll see if, uh, if there's any options that are interesting because at the moment the computer doesn't really say much. It looks nice but it doesn't do much. It's got battery level, it's got the speed and the uh, the power assist level that I'm in. Right, I'm going to go down to gear one. So I'm in gear one right now. I'm going to slow right down. Okay, so let's pretend I'm at the lights. So I'm at the lights, I'm in gear one. And I can take off. Ooh, dear. Okay, pretty instant. It's not too bad. And as soon as it, as long as it thinks I'm trying, it'll keep going fast. But now I'm too fast for gear one, so it's not really doing much. So now I need to actually use the gears to go faster. <laughs> it makes it act kind of like a bit more like a mid drive. It's quite clever. Oh, I'm kind of losing a bar of battery already in two miles. Yeah, I like this. It's just so much more natural than cadence sensor. Oh, 27. It feels like, an, it just feels like I'm riding a normal bike and with the sensor, it just it's like I'm a bit stronger. The bike has 160mm mechanical disc brakes which work fine but as always I'd prefer hydraulic brakes on an e-bike. It has front suspension with 100mm travel and is fully adjustable. There's a preload dial to decrease the amount of travel and a lockout dial that can stiffen the suspension and then fully lock it out if you don't need it. All bikes should have this in my opinion. Now let's take a look at that app. Screen brightness at night, screen brightness during the day. Password, unit setting, miles per hour, good. Auto unlock distance. So there's nothing about unlocking top speed, sadly. Okay, so that detects errors. So detection is errors, so there's no errors. Am I on zero? Oh, hang on, so it's just gonna... Whoa! Okay, so all it is is selecting what level we're in. It doesn't actually do anything. So the app then, apart from changing it from kilometers per hour to miles per hour, doesn't really do much for us. The error thing is quite cool. The um, being able to choose what level you're in, pointless, because you can do it on the uh, thing. Uh, your lights, it's got a button for rear light, but this, got, this bike doesn't have a rear light, so that's pointless. And again, you can do the uh, lights from the, with your thumb. So you don't need that. The locking and the password, maybe. Not that anyone can't steal your bike, you always want to lock your bike up, so that's kind of pointless as well. Hid blind, I don't know what that is. Something to do with lights. Let's go sideways. Mm. And then recording your trip and telling you what battery you've done, we've done 33 kilometers. Oh, come on, keep that, I've changed to miles per hour now, put that back, put that into miles please. But I'm liking this torque sensor. Very nice. It's starting to prop it right now, about to go under the bridge, so I'm gonna put the camera back to the front. Do you know what I should have done? Definitely what I should have done. It is pretty instantaneous when it goes, that's good. I like that. On the trails. Feels decent over there. So there's no rear suspension on this bike. 
It's got a front shock, which is lockable, which is nice, because I like to be able to lock out the shocks, to be honest. Whilst we pass the tarmac digging dog, let's go over a few more specs. The 250 watt motor is made by Bafang, who obviously makes solid e-bike motors, and the bike has 40 newton meters of torque, weighs 25 kilograms, and a max load of 125 kilograms. Oh. <laughs> Those hard tails. You go over a bump and you flings you up. By the way, this doesn't have a throttle, but I think there is an option to have a throttle if you want a throttle, which is nice. But of course, throttles that take you over, however, over six kilometers per hour are illegal. But as I always say, no one's no one's going to get in trouble if they've got a normal 250 watt. No, not this way. Where are you going this way? Silly cat. You walking a cat? Hey, do you want to come through? It might take me a while. Cheers. Thank you. Right. There's definitely like an instant kick when you pull in that some e-bikes don't have, like the M20, Engui M20 on pedal assist. It takes a good three or four seconds before it kicks in. This one, I've got to stop again. Yeah, bet. Mm. Half a second. But, because it's a torque sensor, it doesn't kick in full power until it knows you're fully pedaling. Fully pedaling. Of course, this bike, you can't forget, can actually go faster than the e-bike speed limit without power. So as soon as you get over 15, it stops giving you any power, but you can push it past that because of the gearing. So I'm going 12, the upper gear, 18, 19, and it stopped giving us power now. I'm going 20, and this is me doing this. Oh, I'm so proud. But I'm getting tired, and as soon as I drop down, I mean, I could go, ooh, can I? That felt weird. They didn't want me to go over 20. And then it helps you up the other side. It's kind of a nice cruising e-bike, mountain bike shape, but not really for mountains. It's got 2.1 inch, 27.5 diameter wheels, which, you know, if you want to go a bit off-road, you can, but I wouldn't do anything too serious on it. In terms of comfort, it's fairly comfortable. I can feel the saddle, it's a bit hard. All in all though, it's a very premium feeling e-bike. At um, 1099, it's not the cheapest of e bikes, it's kind of like mid low range, still obviously a thousand pounds is a lot of money. But for a thousand pounds, it's good that you've got lockable suspension on the front, which uh, seems okay. You can also adjust the preload. Uh, I would have, I always want hydraulic, hydraulic brakes and also. The gears are fine, the uh, Shimano, Tawny gears, they're like the basic ones, they're okay, but I do prefer the Altus ones, the ones kind of a bit above them, they're not amazing gears but they're, they're better than these, I think for a thousand pounds I could put on that, 14.5 amp hours, battery, 36 volt battery, which means you're getting about 522 I think, I'm doing that by memory, not my baths. Uh, watt hours, which is a decent range. Now, I'm going to do the hill. I'm going to do it from a stop as well. Okay, so not too bad takeoff. Three miles an hour, four miles an hour. 
Five miles now. Six, seven, let's go up a gear. Ten. The thing is, I can't do like throttle only because it wants me to be pushing it. I'm not really doing anything. I am ghost pedaling now. Oh, so uh, it's just letting me go max speed because it won't go over 15 and a half. Okay. Well, he's got the power to do that. So what do I prefer then? Do I prefer torque sensor? Do I prefer cadence sensor? To be honest, torque sensing is better. The torque sensor is better because it does allow you to kind of adjust it a bit with your feet, but not really that much. And it is really cool how you can use the gears to sort of adjust the amount of power as well as the uh, the actual speed the actual pedal assist level yeah scoot actually make really good bikes they're, they're um quality wise they are really good to be fair they were doing nothing wrong then it was me who if anyone should wait it should have been me but i thought ah i'm thin i can get through the bike's thin i'm not thin so if i wanted to fully ghost pedal will it get me no i need to be engaging so if you do find yourself in a low gear then you do have you are actually forced to up a gear in order to kind of engage yourself not with much effort but then that engages the boater so that was the first ride of the Askew Natuno Plus and my first experience of a torque sensor. And I have to say it was a pleasant experience and much more engaging than the usual cadence sensor. It's kind of like comparing a manual gearbox in a car with an automatic. If you want to be lazy and have max power all the time, then the cadence sensor will be fine for you. If you want to be a bit more involved with the ride, then you'll want to check out the torque sensor. The Askew Natuno Plus seems like a very nice bike and it will be back for a full review where I will know much more about the bike's abilities and of course we will take it up the proper hill climb test too after that eight kilometer ride the computer had full battery bars and the app said 100 percent of course that's not true but it is encouraging that we hadn't lost a bar of battery yet as usually after that route i would have if we've already sold you on the bike then there are links to the bike in the description and here at the evrc we have tested many wonderful e-bikes and e-scooters and skateboards so make sure you take a look at the channel for more pev content if you got something from that video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Thanks for watching until the end, and until next time, ride safe.